Hi guys, I'm Dylan Hartley and I'm the new host of the England Rugby Podcast with O2 Inside Line. This week, we welcome Willie Hines and George Furbank. Willie Hines, George Furbank, welcome. Good to see you both. How are you getting on? Good, thanks Dylan. Just awesome to reconnect with all the boys. I love that, Furbs. Respectful, let the old man go first. Exactly, always. Obviously, like social distancing and stuff is in play, but um, everyone seemed to seem to sit, sit around, and there's there's a decent area downstairs. Um, there's a hell of a gaming setup downstairs. Um, Tell me about the gaming setup, right? That that was like the the hardest thing to do was to keep 32 boys happy. Like you've always got the standard stuff. You've got darts, pool table. There's always a bit of cards. There's always coffee. Eddie Eddie was quoted saying that um, someone had come in and, and sorted you boys out. Yeah, they've done, they've done a hell of a job, to be fair. Uh, there's, a, there's one big screen with a PlayStation Xbox, uh, another TV with a PlayStation, and a couple of gaming PCs as well for the proper nerds. Um, so, yeah, yeah you find Genji. Uh, Genji's been sat, sat on the, uh, com- the computing PCs quite a bit. Where, where do you tend to gravitate to, uh, Willie? Mate, I'm like an absolute recluse when it comes to any sort of gaming. I'm, like, I'm much much more comfortable with a deck of cards and a, and a couple of boys playing Euchre or 500 or something. So, uh, yeah, we lost one of our one of our partners and Cruiser's not here anymore, but me, Mac and uh, and Mark Wilson uh, are looking to recruit one more for our for our card table at the moment. Can I just say that is, that's generation. I think that's age. All those players you've, <laughs> yeah. you've listed there are really old family men. Mako looks experience, like... Experience, yeah. Yeah, experience, experience. Hey, um, I was just thinking for, for both you boys, um, there's obviously a, a decade between you, but you're both new to the environment, uh, I guess. How have you found, um, I'll go with you first, George, um, being a young player coming into that from what you've known? Yeah, it's, um, like, it's just a challenge, to be honest. I felt, I felt more, more relaxed um, coming into camp this time, having, having done, the, done the previous Six Nations one um, and been around some of the lads before. So, um, so that was that was a little bit easier, um, but it's just a kind of a step up in, in terms of everything, in intensity, um, training load. So it, like it, it takes some getting used to, um, but it's, it's it's been challenging but enjoyable um, at the same time. Um, and Eddie speaks a lot about becoming the best team in the world, um, and so having that kind of goal is is really exciting and it's pretty awesome to be a part of. Do you um do you reckon the club game because you had quite a rapid rise if you think about it, Ferbs? Do you think the club game lulled you into a false sense of professionalism of what it takes? And then obviously that step up, um, obviously did it did it smack you in the face? Was it a bit of a shock to the system the first time you went in? Yeah, I think it was, to be honest, yeah. Um, like, I'd never had to sort of think about anything in terms of, like, obviously you think about, um, like, games and you do analysis and stuff, but in terms of dealing with different things um, and stuff like you kind of just walk out as a youngster and and just go do the stuff you've been doing since you were six years old on the rugby pitch. So um, like it's, yeah, so it makes you kind of think about, think about a few different things um, to consider. So that, that was probably the, the biggest challenge and obviously you're on a bigger stage generally as well. So you have, you've got more eyes watching you. Um, so yeah, there's, it's, it's definitely, uh, definitely different to club. So, so between that, um, that Six Nations and where you are now, have you, would you say you've had a rapid kind of increase in maturity or, or experience? Have you changed things over lockdown on, um, on how you conduct yourself at home and, and, and with training and stuff now? Um, yes. Uh, I, yes. Yes, yeah, yeah, sli- slightly, yeah. Um, I, I think oh, it's Eddie, a, Eddie the master, the master sees everything, mate. Constant improvement. <laughs> If, if you're not improving, mate, you're going backwards. <laughs> no, I'm improving. It's a, it's, it's a long sort of process working on yourself and finding exactly what, um, what suits you um, when it comes to getting, getting ready for games, all the preparation stuff. Um, I think that's a, it's a long learning process. It's not something that's just going to happen immediately. Like you go into one camp and it happens immediately. Um, so I'm, I'm, always, I'm always trying to learn about, about what's, what's best for me um, in, t- in terms of that stuff. So, like, yeah, like I said, is, is speaking to Andrea, psychologist and stuff as well, has been has been really interesting. Kind of, sh- she's kind of helping me get to know myself a bit more as well, which is which has been nice. I'd like to get to know you, Ferbs. I can be your psychologist. <laughs> Just come talk to me, um, Willie. What about you? Like, um, you obviously cut your teeth uh, down under in New Zealand, and you came to the party um, late, so to speak. But I suppose the same experience. You know, new new to uh, a team and culturally 
from my experience, I can imagine it's pretty different. Um, what, what's your kind of first takes on your, your first involvement? Uh, was it pre-Japan 2019? You know, I had, I had one little taste uh, back in, I think it was the end of 2017, I got invited to a camp when playoffs were on and there were a few players um, unavailable. So that was like my first little insight just for a couple of days just to um, to see what it was like. And I was blown away, mate. Like I just, I couldn't believe the uh, the step up in intensity, the professionalism, um, the amount that we did in the space of what, 48 hours in terms of physical preparation, mental prep, um, the trainings itself, just how long and how intense they were. You know, like it was a real shock to the system. Um, but it was awesome, mate. I, like I, I absolutely loved that and it probably it lit a little bit of a fire for me just to think, sure, you know, I might might still be off the, uh, you know, down the picking order, but, you know, you're at least, you're on the radar a little bit. Um, and then once we did come into to camp for um, pre-World Cup, that was, um, I guess that was the, the real, uh, you know, starting point for me in terms of um, potentially, you know, g- getting into the squad. And, um, you know, while I was, 32 and, and older and it, it played a fair bit of rugby I felt like one of the one of the young boys you know I was I was new I was nervous um you know you're looking around at, at these world-class players like Owen and Forty and Maro Toji and all these guys that have been there and done it for a number of years um and you are you, you're really nervous but at the same time really excited and um like I say I was just even now having been in for a couple of campaigns still blown away by what's available to us, the resources, the thought process that goes in behind the scenes with not just the coaches, but the trainers. And um, there's, there's just always more, isn't there? When you come in here, there's always more that you can be doing to, to try and better yourself. So it is awesome. What, what's been the, the kind of key message from your mini camp? Because you always start with setting the tone, setting the scene. What, what's been the, the, the theme for post-COVID for, for this England team? Like Ferb said before, um, you know, Eddie's really clear and the group are really clear. We, you know, we want to be the best team in the world. And and at the moment, um, our, our success rate is about 80% and we want to get to 90%. Um, and, and that's that's been uh, been laid on pretty clear. That's what we're striving to do. So it's not about necessarily wiping the slate clean, but taking some of the, the really good things that we've done over the last few years, um, building on that and taking, taking them to another level. Willie... And, and Ferb, same question too. Do you find enjoyment in in these camps? Because I know from um, experience, and you can't say the wrong thing here, because it is a high it's a high performance environment. It's it's it, there is pressure, I suppose, if if you feel that pressure, if you if you call it that. But it's intense. You know what I mean? You're there. You've got to cram in all your commercial stuff. Like even this talking to me is 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 uh, chipping into your day when you could be resting. Do you find enjoyment? In, in doing it, Ferbs, I ask you as a as a young fella. Yes, yeah, it's it's, uh, it's like you said, it's intense. Um, and the difference between here and club is uh, it's, it's harder to switch off when you're here um, because because you're in the environment the whole time. Club, you you're in your club and you switched on whilst you're there, and, and then you can just go home and and you're you're relaxed in your own environment. Um, so here, I've, I've definitely found it harder to switch off. Um, but like with with the sort of stuff that they put on, with like like I said, the the gaming, the the darts, the they they got a little putting thing. Like there's 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 also plenty of time to kind of hang around and, and chill with your mates. And and the closer you become, the more enjoyment I think you get out of it. What about what about you, Willie? Yeah, mate, I, think, I mean, yeah. even at, even at 32, mate, you you know, you're not going to admit to creaking, but. I mean, you play scrum half. You're hardly creaking, are you? You don't take any contact. But sure, surely, um, as I got older, um, I, I struggled to enjoy it. Probably because my body wasn't doing uh, performing to how I once knew it could. I'm just saying, for you at 32, you're still finding enjoyment in in the game. 100. percent I guess the difference between you and I is that you'd been doing it for the what the best part of 10 years, whereas for me, it's it's still pretty new, mate. And so. Um, I, I probably just feel really blessed with the opportunities that I've got ahead of me and know that at, at the tender age of, of 32 or so, um, that it, it's not going to last forever for me. So I'm, I'm well aware of, I guess, just coming in and, and trying to make the most of every day. Um, there, like you say, there's pressure. Um, you definitely feel it. You know that you're, you know, you're always being judged on, on um, whatever it may be, not just out on the pitch, but, but in everything. 
Um, so you want to, you know, represent yourself the best you can. Um, but I think that that brings out the best in you, doesn't it? So um, no, look, I'm I'm just trying to trying to make the most of every day I've got. So you you, you obviously had um, like I said before, you cut your teeth in New Zealand, and then you went to Gloucester, and you, you've got or you or you did have quite heavy South African influence there, and now you you you're playing obviously rugby for England. I was going to say culturally, have you picked up things from or or used things that you you've learned in New Zealand? Have you used that with Gloucester and England? Because I found when Chris Boyd came to to Northampton, I'd never had um, a Kiwi coach. So I was obviously born in New Zealand, grew up there, learnt my rugby there, but professionally, I'd never had had a, a Kiwi coach. So when when Boydie came in, I had to learn almost like a new lingo and a new kind of way of talking and understanding the game through Chris Boyd. And I was thinking, have you culturally seen a difference between English rugby and New Zealand rugby? Um, I guess at, at, at club level, perhaps the thing I noticed, um, well, the thing that was drummed into me early on at, at Canterbury and the Crusaders was, you know, they had a, a really strong culture of team first. Like, and I know, I know a lot of teams talk about that. Like, we all talk about it, don't we? Like, you, you always put the team first, but when you're in a team that you feel like genuinely does that, it, it, it is quite a powerful thing. And perhaps that was something I noticed when I got to Gloucester, you know, whether or not they always, always had that. Um, but then coming into the England team, it was so evident through the, through the leaders of the team, the way that they prepared, the way that they brought new people in. Um, and just the, I guess, like you say, the, the lingo, the communication, the way that people speak to each other, um, it was it was always trying to harness that we are here for this team. Um, you know, we're, we've got a, a massive responsibility representing England, um, and in order to do that, we've got to be together. We we have to we have to be completely aligned. We have to have the team first. You know, the, the individual can, can never come before the team, so to speak. We're going to throw it back to first caps, boys. Ferbs, I was there to watch your first cap. Um, tell me about your experience, mate. Yeah, it was uh, it was it was unbelievable. Like it's um, it, it was unexpected to start off with. Um, firstly, like being into, called into camp, and then I thought the camp would just be like a, a good learning experience for me, and and to be part of that would be pretty special. And then obviously a, a couple of boys went down with injuries, um, and got the call up. Again, kind of getting my head around that to start off with was was pretty crazy but uh, like it was an unbelievable experience um I, it's something i don't think i'll ever forget just like walking out walking out in the stade de france with with eight thousand people like i'm used to playing in sort of front of and the garden the gardens is a good atmosphere but there's you get what 12 13 thousand people there um so then the experiencing walking out to eight thousand people was was just next level um and yeah i, I didn't have the game i wanted to have um everybody wants to wants to make a, a good first appearance on, on their debut. Um, and I didn't probably have the game I wanted to have, but just like looking back on it, um, there was a little bit of disappointment, but also just, just the whole experience was, was so special. Um, and to kind of have my family there and, and they got to come in the change rooms and, and see me get my first cap awarded again was, was, uh, was a moment that was, um, yeah, no, I'm not going to forget. No, it was a heck of a day, mate. And I don't think, um, I don't think you're the only one. I just think the team didn't fire that well that day. You know what I mean? Willie, uh, talk me through, who was it against, mate? I'm, I'm sorry I don't have that here. That's cool. It was against Wales at Twickenham. Um, again, yeah, awesome, awesome experience. Um, really lucky to play, obviously, my first cap um, at Twickenham as well. was was really cool. Um, I'd played there once before with club, so I knew what, what an amazing place it was to play at. But I guess not until you actually go and um, play a game for England at Twickenham that you uh, you fully realise the, the power of that place. Um, just just an awesome day all around. Um, running out for the first time, singing the anthem, um, and then I guess once that once that first whistle went, the you know the nerves kind of went away. I'd been absolutely packing myself to be honest for about forty eight hours beforehand. Um, but yeah, just just getting into the game and and we, we played pretty well. Um, Fords are really dominant, which I guess made my life easier as a nine. Um, throughout the game and and uh yeah just a, an awesome experience had my my mum over from New Zealand and, and obviously my wife and kids were, were there as well so um you know pretty special time to have them in the, in the changing sheds afterwards as well that's, that's pretty cool to hear like um 
the, the older I got, the more kind of normal it became to play and I didn't get nervous. Um, it was just kind of business. It was really cool to hear even at 32, um, you were nervous and, and had that kind of excitement. Um, I was going to say to, to especially you, Willie, how have you kind of matured and, and developed over the years? Are, are you still learning or have you always been the same person? Or when you're a bit younger, were you a completely different sort of player and, and personality? And have you grown to where you are now? Or what, what's, what's the sort of path? Um, I th- look, I think I've always had a, um, a pretty curious kind of mind. Uh, when it comes to the game, I've tried to have a, a really open mind and, um, you know, early on was lucky enough to be coached by some some guys that were really, um, really big on like a growth mindset and and never, I guess, never feeling like you're, you've cracked it or you're the, the finished article. So um, have tried to be coachable and, and, and listen to those people that are advising you at the time. And I guess the thing I love about um, being in this environment as well was Eddie makes it really clear what he expects from you and he, and he keeps things pretty simple. And I think um, when you are first starting out, you just want to be, you just kind of just want to be told a little bit what's expected of you. Go out, I want you to nail these two things. Um, and he, he always keeps it to one or two points and go out and sort of build your game around that. And then other things will happen off the back of it. Um, when you get inundated with detail, sometimes that you just sort of become a bit half cooked and you don't do anything well. So um, yeah. I suppose as um, as a general, I suppose as a, as a halfback, you've got a lot on your shoulders. And the one thing Eddie did for me was like, do not worry about any of the noise, any of the media noise. All I want you to do is hit rucks, be the best set piece hooker in the world, and make your tackles. He said, I don't even want you to like make big tackles. He just said, be defensively sound, hit rucks, and be, you know, great at set piece. And then it kind of freed me up massively just to go do those three things. Whereas before coaches kind of wanted this all round performance or they didn't even give you that direction of what they wanted. But I think having clarity in your head about what you need to achieve um, is quite powerful. So, so Ferbs, um, Willie's obviously talked about Eddie's sort of clarity, what, what he wants from, from Willie. Do you know what's expected of you? Yeah, he, um, he actually spoke to me uh, after, after the France game um, and said, he said to me, like to, to be to be one of the best fullbacks in the world, you just got to do the, the basic. You have your basic skills and do them. Be solid with them, um, and don't go looking for for any headlines. Basically, um, he said. He said, you if you do the basics well in a game, one thing's going to happen, um, and and you'll look like a world beater. So, um, he said, just just really focus on them, um, get them right, concentrate on those in a game, um, and and don't go don't go looking for looking for something that's gonna that's gonna stand out basically. Ferbs, there's a rumour that you're only in the England team because you, you went and played for Ramwick, you and Alex Moon. <laughs> he, he, I think he loves that, yeah. Oh man, like if I could do it again, I'd be in Coogee Beach right now, just like plying my trade at Ramwick um, with an English That's passport. Dream, mate, that is. Tell us a little bit about that experience, you and um, the Moon man on your gap year. Yeah, well, Moon, Moon will be better at telling the experience because he actually lasted a couple of months out there. I only had one game out there. Um, and so I went out there, coming back from an injury, had one game and got injured in that first game. Um, so, I mean, my experience of playing rugby out there was was minimal. Um, what about your experience of just being there? Yeah, the, well, the club gave me a couple of weeks after uh, the injury just to, just to hang out there. It was unbelievable. Like, that's, I think that's like the perfect lifestyle. You've got the city, um, you've, got, you've got Coogee Beach, um you've got you've got manly just over the way like everything is is so close by um and the weather's obviously ideal as well so that no, it was uh yeah it was an unbelievable couple of weeks even though i wasn't playing i was going to say um it will you be able to relate to this because um obviously played schoolboy rugby and, and a bit of rep rugby in new zealand but we used to get billeted wherever we got um wherever we traveled and played you always like roll the dice with what what family you're gonna get billeted with and um is it is it true that Mooney got put up in like some sort of mansion in Coogee Beach and, and, and you're in like a caravan somewhere? Oh, like his his place was unbelievable. Like it was uh, like just just off the just off one of the beaches, um, overlooking the ocean, like big glass front, swimming pool. 
like it was it was unbelievable like he had an unbelievable gig and and uh, me and him are actually both still in touch um with those with that family they're a really nice family so i spent a lot of time around there so what about the family you were with i, I keep in touch with them a little bit yeah they were they, no they were nice all right that, that leads me on to my next question it, you know humility and, and being humble willie what, what's the um the what do you see in terms of um, your generation of player and when you look at Ferbs' kind of group? I've got a pretty strong opinion on them, but um, I'd like to know what you see. Well, they spend 90% of the day like that. We spend a little bit more of our day like that. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. But uh, in terms of... What's your opinion, Dils? <laughs> I just think that over time, uh, rugby culture's been diluted more and more so and... Some of it's good, um, the new school stuff's good, but I think some of the real strong traditions have been lost um, over time. And it's things like the phones, you know. I remember just phones being in the changing room were a no-no. And, you know, I see guys on, on Snapchat before a game now because you're addicted to your phones. Um, the social dilemma, watch that on Netflix, it'll teach you a lot about your phone. Guys are literally going, I see them on a bus going Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, just bouncing. And I'm like, you should be thinking about the game. You should be on your, if you're looking at anything, you should be looking at your notes. I, I don't know. I, I sound like an old fart, but there's just culturally a few things that I think have been lost over time. And um, it's probably people like me that haven't passed on those things. It's my fault. Willie kind of covered it before. Culturally, there's a few differences. You know, the majority of the boys are playing uh, Fortnite or FIFA and you're playing cards. Is there any other kind of obvious um, things that you see? There could be good I things think, as uh, well. There could be good, Willie. I don't know. There's, there's, there's probably lots in, in what you say there about, you know, the responsibility of guys our age to actually pass some of those traditions down. Maybe, maybe we've... Uh, Maybe we've not done that as well as we could have. I think um, there's, there's like good sort of things that have happened and I kind of picked up on it towards the end. In terms of like the professionalism, like I just had Johnny May on here and I see him, he, he's probably seven, eight years younger than me. Maybe not. Jeez, I'm not that old. But the way kind of Johnny conducted himself as a younger player, how professional and diligent he was, those are some of like the, the good sort of traits that I see in some of the young players now. They're so professional from a young age where, like, I didn't work out my diet until I was, like, 30 years old. I didn't work out, like, training, and I didn't understand that stuff. But now, like, they're coming through. They're just, like, 40 and Owen, 16, 17 years old. They're playing professional. Like, at 16 years old, I was dossing, you know what I mean? Um, so in terms of good things, uh, I think there's a lot of good stuff coming through from the young fellas as well. Ferbs, what do you reckon? What, what about, your, what about your, your age group? <laughs> um, well, I, I actually learned a lot from um, from being in camp the first time uh, about that sort of professionalism, and and I'd always kind of like I don't have the best body in the world anyway. Um, but looking at sort of Johnny mm -hmm. and you got uh, great, you got great facial hair, and you've got sweeping long locks. <laughs> yeah, that, oh, that does nothing. That does nothing for rugby, though, unfortunately. I'll do it for a lid lock. Willie, Willie, would you would you settle for this? Mate, you're going all right. I, I'm, the, I'm, I'm not going. one to throw stones ever. I'm going. I'm not going all right. I'm going. That's about it. Uh, but now, it's like being around people like Johnny and, and you said 40 and like that, how much time um, and, and effort that goes into actually looking after your body um, from prepping for training to then recovering after training, all that kind of stuff. Like I would, I would tend to do a little bit when I was at the club and then, as soon as I got home, just I'd, I'd be sacking it off, um, and I, I realised like, I'm, okay, I'm not actually looking after my body as, as anywhere near as well as I could be. Um, so, so seeing that and learning that kind of kind of flicked a switch that actually I could be doing a lot more to uh, to, to look after and make sure I'm kind of fresh going into into games and stuff like that. Yeah, I think it's quite powerful, and I think Willie, the, the sort of category that you sit in as a senior player there um, through age and experience you've got a huge kind of responsibility to set the standards um, of what it looks like to, to do what you've done for a decade or so. Um, and I think that the quicker you can kind of get up to speed, George, and, and latch on to why Owen's so good, why Fordy and Johnny are so good, there's a reason that they're good. And it's, it's almost like the stuff you don't see because everyone sees them on the weekend and, 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 and watches them play and they think they're brilliant, but it's the stuff behind closed doors, even away from training, 
that those guys are doing, which makes them special. Ferbs, did you ever have a Dylan Hartley poster on your wall? Uh, you might have been in there. That was, I, de I, I definitely have photos on there. You, you have a Stephen Myler, a Ben Foden, and you had a, a, a green, black, and gold wardrobe, I remember. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know if you made it. Sorry. But, but for you, you know, like, um, I, I won't, because I had to face all these questions that I could potentially ask Willie, but for you, it is the dream, isn't it? To play for your local club in terms of the catchment area in Northampton and then to go on and, and play for England, it, it, I'm, I'm assuming it was a dream. Yeah, it, it was. Yeah, hundred percent. Like, I've played rugby since since I was five, and and dad's uh, dad's always played rugby, so I've kind of always been around that. And then growing up, supporting Northampton, um, and then kind of being being picked up at a young age, and and then slowly coming through and actually actually playing in my first couple of years or training anyway with um, with guys who I massively looked up to um, was yeah that was that was so special to start off with. Um, yeah, no worries. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was that was kind of surreal and, and special to start off with, and and yeah, I just looked to kind of learn and grow. I never I never thought I'd get this opportunity to be honest. Um, I never thought I'd get was going to get a contract at, at under 18s. Like I was always one of the, in the in the top half of players, but I never saw myself as as one of the best players that was going to get a contract. So um, to do that and then to to keep working hard for 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 a few years and get my then get my Saints debut. Um, and yeah, it's just been a it's, it's been a weird journey, um, but like one I've loved. Um, and like you said, it's, it's a dream come true to kind of then make this step and, and make my debut for England. And now, hopefully, I can keep, keep working hard and, and turn it into a few more caps. I'll give you some old man advice, Ferbs. When when I was your age, it seemed really good fun and really easy when you're on the up. Um, when you're the new kid on the block, it's that that sort of rise um, comes naturally, or it's like I said, easy. I think you've just got to enjoy that sort of resilience sort of piece and the challenge of, of now you're there is to try and stay there for, for a decade or so and just try and um, get yourself better and better uh, at every opportunity and, and stay there. Um, coming into camp, yeah, you're welcome. That's advice. Um, um, <laughs> coming, coming into camp, obviously, um, we, we actually started on this, but like forming new bonds, getting everyone uh, on script and aligned, like, are you guys able to, to room together or is COVID kind of, um, so you're in like prison, prison cells? Yeah, I'm not even allowed in each other's rooms. That's weird. How's Johnny and uh, George Ford coping with that? They spend all their time in the, in the training centre on the mats rolling together. They are weird, aren't they? I was thinking though, in, in terms of, um, do you guys force yourselves to um, step out of your comfort zones and sit next to different people at dinner and kind of form those new friendships, um, you know, grab coffee with boys? Do you, do you kind of throw yourself out there, push yourself out there? Yeah, look, I, I don't think it's, it's not too hard to do, is it? Like you've, the, the environment that they've got set up here, like Ferbs mentioned earlier, like there's, there's nice little chill out zones. Um, as you know, food, food and stuff's always unbelievable. Um, there's coffees on hand. So there's, you get plenty of opportunity sort of informally to sit down and, and get to know some of the new guys and I guess you you know what that, that feels like to be that new guy and uh, you know if, if you see a bloke sitting at a table by himself you don't just want to leave him there um, twiddling his thumb so you go over and, and have a chat and um, you know everyone in these environments are good buggers and it's just about getting to know people isn't it? Well I'm, I'm happy it's changed and uh, <laughs> in 2008 the first time I turned up to camp all the Leicester players were sat on one table and they didn't even look up from their suit to say hello and I just kind of sat on the table by myself but times have changed um, and I, I know you guys make a big effort to make it uh, inclusive and welcoming and um, do you know what I think that's um, I think it's a powerful thing when, when everyone feels a part of it you know what I mean um, you can get up to speed a lot quicker as well talk to me about weird friendships is there any weird friendships or unlikely friendships that you've spotted in camp I know Genji likes to sleep in other people's beds, but we probably can't talk about that because of COVID. The unlikely probably trio that I kind of formed was with um, Sinks and Anthony, which was probably not where you'd expect the, the bald white guy from Christchurch to be <laughs> to be hanging out so much. But um, yeah, just seemed to get on really well with those guys. They're big, big sauna fans as well. So we'd, we'd spend a lot of time in the saunas and in the, in the cold baths together. Um, and seem to get on really well with those guys. So that's probably a, a little bit of an unlikely one. 
Herbs, you, you formed any 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 new friendships? Um, mine was my first camp was probably with Tom Curry, um, which kind of makes sense. Really similar age, um, and he's a moron anyway, so <laughs> he's he's easy so, to get along with. The first ever tour, we went to Argentina, and he was my roommate. And he thought the whole time when I was talking to him, obviously I was the captain on the tour. Everything was a test, you know. Like off the um, off the plane, um, I had a couple of like you know those little celebrations chocolates. Um, I nabbed a couple of them from the kitchen off the plane. And I put them in my in my bag. And when I was unpacking my bag, I said, "Oh, bro, you want a chocolate?" And he's like, "Is this a test?" And I was like, "No, do you want a chocolate?" And he's like, "No, no, you'll tell Eddie." And I was like. I was like, Curry, stop being an idiot. It's just a, it's like a little Snickers. I was like, do you want a chocolate or not? He's like, I do, but I think you're, you're going to tell Eddie. But that is what I was dealing with. I was, he was about 18 years old at the time. And the last time I toured Argentina, he was nine. Um, it, was a, it was a strange tour. I want to talk to you about the master. How do you find working for the boss? Because I know Eddie, uh, very charismatic. Uh, he drives... He drives um, high standards. I'll ask you, Willie, because you, you've probably had um, uh, quite a few coaches in, in your time. How's, how's he compare um, to, to everyone you've worked with before? Yeah, look, he's, um, he's, he's so unique, isn't he? The way that, um, the way that he prepares a team, um, you know, in my opinion, is probably second to none just in terms of um, the amount of uh, detail that he delivers not only himself but through his other coaches through the the support staff um but to me the the thing that probably stands out about him is the the way he speaks to players one-on-one -on -one and, and the way he seems to be able to get the best out of people and and that relationship is probably different from person to person you know the way he speaks to me is probably different different to the way he speaks to verbs and the way he speaks to sinks or you know, whoever it is he's probably got a different approach based on who you are as a person, where you're at in your career. Um, but he just seems to have such a good handle on that. And, um, you know, like I mentioned earlier, the way he, he seems to be able to just simplify things when they need to be simplified, um, give you a really good direction on what's expected. And, and I just feel like the way that he, it's sort of hard to explain, but the way he builds a team through the week, that was something that I thought was just amazing. I, I probably hadn't felt that before in terms of, um, you know, when I, when I first came in for our, uh, the first test match, just seeing the way that um, there was like just this intensity rise throughout the week, start off the week quite challenging. Boys, we have to be doing this. Um, you know, this isn't good enough at the moment. We, we've got to be nailing these two or three things down. And then by the end of the week, it's, boys, you're so ready. I've never seen a team so ready to go and do this. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. And like you're frothing at the mouth ready to go by the time by the time the first whistle comes and um, yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool thing. I'm not sure if you felt that. Yeah, do, do you know what? Like, I think that's probably one of his uh, USPs is, is probably his age and his experience. Like, he, he's been there and done it. And because he's a bit like yourself in terms of always wanting to grow and learn, um, he's always looking for the next thing and he's always learning from things that haven't worked. He's basically been there and done it. And I remember going into the office and having my daily meetings with him, which was sometimes good and sometimes challenging. They're always challenging. But I'd say, let's do this, or what do you think to this? And he'd go, nah, mate, that's rubbish. But then he would quickly build you back up and say, this is why, because I did it with the Brumbies in you know, 2003. And it's like, oh, okay. And he's like, have you tried this? Or, you know. And if you ever took something to Eddie, he would be really responsive. He'd be like, okay, but why? Show me how and show me why. You know, Provide the data or the, the details. So he's always open to, to listening, which I found really good. But I think the key thing is, is experience. Um, and it just shows the, the older you get, Ferbs, the better you're gonna get if, you, uh, if you're open to learning new things. I think that's us. That's Boys, thank you for your time. Willie Hines and George Furbank. Um, I wish you luck for the forthcoming season and I look forward to seeing you boys back on the field. Thank you, boys. Cheers, yes,